Hey guys, Jay Steven here. So a few people have been asking me about this, uh, Michael Christian and some other subscribers. And so I wanted to clarify, I wanted to talk a little bit about my vision for a movie about the Crusades. So if you've been following this channel for a while, you probably know that a long term goal of mine is to eventually make a movie about the Crusades. Obviously, this is uh, pretty ambitious, but uh, this is something that I think is definitely achievable. Um, as Real Crusades history grows, and as uh, our access to resources increases and our profile increases, I think eventually we could be involved in a major film project. And I think a, a movie of some sort um, that is not necessarily a documentary, but more of a movie style, a narrative like Kingdom of Heaven or something like that. Of course, the idea is to make it quite different than something like Kingdom of Heaven, but you get the idea. So, first of all, this is a long-term goal. Like, this is going to take some time to actually make this happen. Um, it's, I don't think it's going to happen this year or anything like that. Um, this is something to kind of shoot for uh, and actually kind of make it the focus of the channel as it grows. In fact, I think this is kind of... This has kind of become the purpose of the channel, ultimately, for me, is to it leading up to this eventual goal. So as the subscriber base grows, as uh, the channel becomes more visible, uh, this is something to ultimately shoot for and ultimately uh, work on. So how would this be done? Um, well, first of all, there would be uh, the option of seeking funding, uh, so finding uh private donors or organizations that are interested in something like this being made. And I think there certainly are uh, both of those things out there. And I think that they could be found. In fact, I've even um, uh, spoken with, with some people like this. Uh, so I think, you know, there are, there are sources of funding that could be found out there. People who would want to contribute to something like this and invest in something like this. Um, I think crowdfunding, of course, could come into play. Like, you know, once the time came, uh, we could make an announcement and say, okay, guys, so we want to do this this film project. Um, you know, Here's how you can help uh, pitch in and, of course, offer those people uh, who, who do pitch in uh, some reward for doing so. Um, and, and then finally, uh, partnering with other organizations and specifically, I think, um, like a film company of some kind. Um, there are some, for example, there are some Catholic film companies out there who do some really interesting uh, historical type things. And there's one I've even had a chance to uh, speak with somebody uh, involved there and talk about um, my idea for this project. And that they thought it was very interesting. And, uh, you know, I'm going to keep that line of communication open. And um, so, yeah, that would kind of be how we would go about actually doing it once the time came. So secondly, I guess the question is why? Why make a film about the Crusades? Other than the fact that just the Crusades are great and it's, it's always worthwhile doing something about the Crusades. Well, first of all, I think most movies that have been made about the Crusades are pretty lame, to use a highly technical term. Um, you know, we think of some of the big budget films that we have seen come out. Uh, Kingdom of Heaven, of course, comes to mind. Kingdom of Heaven has all sorts of problems with it. I think a lot of these movies are made by people who kind of have a problem with the Crusades to begin with. They sort of have swallowed this false narrative about the Crusades, that somehow the Crusades represented this evil force going against uh, the peaceful Islamic world or something like that. We know from uh, historians, of course, that that's just not true. That's ridiculous. Um, so some of these movies, like Kingdom of Heaven in particular, reveal this anti-crusade bias, this 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 uh, pre-judgment already packaged into the movie that A, the crusades are evil, and B, there's no excusing them, I mean, much less uh, feeling positively about them. So let's just explore how evil all this is. Like, I think Kingdom of Heaven really pushed that idea. The idea behind Kingdom of Heaven was that this, the crusades were just awful and evil, and if only we could get past all that, you know, there'd be just this peace between the Muslims and Christians of, of the Holy Land. And of course, we know that's ridiculous. Uh, when the Crusaders arrived in Palestine, 
in Syria in the uh, late 11th century, they arrived at a place that was very much already a battleground and had been a battleground for centuries. Uh, indeed, the Muslims themselves were fighting each other in this part of the world. So, so that's ridiculous. And I think a big problem with these movies is they don't look at what the Crusades were actually about. And this is really unfortunate because the Crusades are so interesting. Like the thing that motivated the Crusades, the, the stuff that actually drove people to, to do this in the medieval world, it's so fascinating. And there's so much potential for human drama and interest there that it's really just a shame that so many of these movies have ignored that. Another movie I can think of is like Arn the Knight Templar. And that movie isn't nearly so um, atrocious as Kingdom of Heaven. It's got some redeeming qualities. But it's really, it's focused more on kind of a love story. And the whole idea of the Crusades is kind of in the background. There's a little bit of discussion about how, you know, this is about defending Jerusalem. There's a scene between Arn and Saladin where he says, you know, my duty is to protect Jerusalem. But that's about as much as they explore it. And of course, if we look at, you know, not a, a movie project per se, but a series like Nightfall, um, that was all about the Holy Grail. So again, the whole point of the Crusades was totally ignored. We need a movie that really looks at the true spirit of the Crusades that explores the actual historical issue that drove so many people to do this. So the love and devotion to, for the Holy Land, you know, this, this deep feeling that medieval Latin Christians felt that um, this was worth doing, that this was so sacred that, that uh, they needed to, to conquer the Holy Land from the Muslims and to hold it for Christendom, and to the Holy Sepulchre, of course, and the Holy Sepulcher, of course, is at the center of this. The Holy Sepulcher, the place where Christ was entombed after his death, the site of his resurrection, this was powerful stuff for medieval Latin Christians. Think about how rarely the Holy Sepulcher is even mentioned in movies about the Crusades. Like, I think of uh, Kingdom of Heaven. Is the Holy Sepulcher mentioned? It may be, I'm not sure, but certainly not in a way that's, that's important. I mean, it's certainly not at the center of the story and the, the motivations of the characters. You know, we think about the main character in Kingdom of Heaven, Balian of Ibelin. The Holy Sepulchre is barely even mentioned. I mean, somebody setting out, you know, from the Latin Christian West in this period of time, the 12th century or 13th century, this would have been on their mind. I mean, th this would have been a powerful thing for them. In my novel, Why Does a Heathen Rage?, I tried to capture some of this in that scene where I've got uh, Robert of Burris, the, uh, my main protagonist, who is a knight, a crusading knight of Jerusalem. There's a scene where he goes to visit the Holy Sepulcher, and it's just this overwhelmingly powerful experience for him. And he experiences how this is just the central motivating thing for him. Everything about his, his, these difficult battles he fights here in the Holy Land is, is centered around his devotion to this one spot in this magnificent old church, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. So I really tried to convey that in that book. And it, this comes into play throughout my book. I mean, the Holy Sepulchre is at the center of, of this novel I wrote, which is set during the 1120s in the kingdom of Jerusalem. King Baldwin II of Jerusalem, who's another one of my main characters, he discusses this. This is something that's a powerful motivator for him. His daughter, Princess Melisande, who is feeling the weight of the coming, uh, her coming responsibility as eventually being queen of Jerusalem. You know, she, she deals with the weight of that responsibility and how you know, she, she barely feels up to it. I mean, for one thing, she's female and her kingdom wishes they had a prince, but you know, her father only has daughters. And so this is falling to, onto her shoulders. And the Holy Sepulchre is just a serious, serious issue for her. So this just really comes to play in a big way in my, not, in my book, in Why Does the Heathen Rage? And I think that, you know, that's part of what my book does to get at the true heart of the Crusades. I think that's a big part of the historicity that I'm actually capturing in this book. And I went to great lengths to make sure this, this book was historically accurate. And, you know, I, I think I succeeded at that. And, um, you know, it required an, an immense amount of research, but I think getting the spirit of the Crusades right was just so important to me. And uh, the Holy Sepulchre as this prime motivating thing. So I think that 
getting to the spirituality of the Crusades, the fact that this was a deeply spiritual thing, and that um, these holy sites were so meaningful. You know, the the city of Jerusalem, the site of the Holy Sepulchre. And then, of course, this, this concept of fighting for Christendom. This was another thing that really motivated Crusaders and is rarely really dealt with in, in films about the Crusades. I mean, it's just amazingly absent. But this concept of, you know, we are here on the frontier of Christendom and we are going to defend it. And this is just, this is a deeply important mission. This was something that burned fiercely in the breasts of Crusaders. And this is something that has to be realized in a, a film for it to really do the Crusades justice. So as I've thought about what this project is going to be like eventually, I've thought about, you know, what will the format be? Of course, the idea of a live action movie about the Crusades is very appealing to me. I would love to do that. Now we look at a film like Kingdom of Heaven. You know, a lot of these movies that are set in the medieval world they're quite expensive. You know, it's not like you can just get some nice camera equipment and film out in the world as it is today. You have to create um, the medieval world. So, you know, these things run into the millions, don't they? So my solution has always been animated, like do an anime style film in an, and with an adult uh, um, seriousness about it. Like not like a cartoony kind of little kids thing, but Maybe perhaps even in the anime style, because, you know, the, sort of the Japanese anime style, in many respects, has an adult side to it, where it's, um, there's a seriousness, you know, there's an attempt to tell a true and a powerful story that is suitable for the adult mind. Um, so that could be an option, you know, a, a very seriously done animated project. I think you could do the expansive battle scenes and that kind of thing. And um, do it within a, a budget that would be more reasonable for something that was a more independent project. But I'm not totally um, closed off to the idea of doing something live action eventually. Um, you know, that, that might be um, possible anyway. You know, we'll just have to see uh, what kind of success we get with Real Crusades history, what the growth is like. And even, you know, once we start to actually look at putting this project in motion, uh, what sort of resources we can, we can draw on. So... Several concepts have come into my uh, thinking in terms of, well, what story do we want to tell? Because, of course, the Crusades are a massive uh, swathe of history. There's a lot of different options we have. Um, I've really kind of thought of three that have stood out to me. First of all, uh, the First Crusade. I think the First Crusade is just a powerful story. This is something that could uh, really uh, be inspiring and fascinating for a lot of people. I've almost thought, though, that the entire First Crusade would be too big of a story to fit into one film. The First Crusade would really work well as a trilogy. Like, I could see the first film being uh, the calling of the Crusade, Pope Urban's call, and then the, you know, the gathering of the armies and the journey to Constantinople, uh, and then sort of uh, picking up with the Siege of Nicaea in 1097 and, and climaxing with uh, the Battle of Dory Laim. In 1097. And so that sort of rounds off your first film. The second film, I think, would be the darker of the, of the three films, uh, in, in keeping with George Lucas's uh, uh, theory of the triune <laughs> storytelling project. Um, you kind of put everybody in this disaster. Well, the Siege of Antioch, of course, is perfect. The Siege of Antioch works very well as a middle act. And then the um, third film, of course, could be the uh, siege of Jerusalem and the victory at Ascalon. So you, know, you get your glorious uh, third part to the trilogy. So that's one thing I've thought of. And because of that, the idea of a first crusade film project almost seems like something that would not be the first thing I tackle or the first thing that real crusades history tackles just because I, I really do like the idea of it as a trilogy. Another idea I've had is, um, something during the reign of Baldwin IV of Jerusalem, so Baldwin the leper. So really what this would kind of be is a reworking of Kingdom of Heaven. I mean, not literally a reworking of Kingdom of Heaven, but taking that period of time that Kingdom of Heaven was set in and presenting an, a historically accurate story in that period of time. My thinking has always been, like, start the film off with, with Baldwin IV's victory at Montgisard, and then have it end with the uh, disastrous battle 
at Hattin. So this would be, um, you know, I think this that's kind of a good bookend there. Uh, you know, Montgasar to Hattin. Uh, this could, there's a lot of uh, powerful stuff from this period anyway. Just so much room for good storytelling. Of course, Baldwin the Fourth of Jerusalem, you know, works very well as one of the heroes. You know, a leper king struggling to defend his kingdom from a powerful enemy, Saladin, in the face of his incredible trial, you know, this incredible suffering of his leprosy, and he still manages to do it. And of course, maybe have Balian of Ibelin, a, a truly historically accurate Balian of Ibelin, as, as an important character. And I can see Reynald of Chatillon being in there. The other idea I had for a film was the Third Crusade. So tell the story of the Third Crusade, specifically Richard's crusade. My idea would be to start with the Siege of Acre, where Richard arrives with his army, and then end with the Battle of Jaffa and the Treaty of Ramla. And again, just so much human drama there, so much you could do with that. Uh, Saladin and Richard, you know, both struggling for this, uh, both of them, you know, dealing with their own tragedies in one way or the other. And I am actually leaning toward this idea, because right now, I'm writing my second novel, and my second novel is set during the Third Crusade. It's, it's a story that takes place during the Third Crusade. Uh, Richard the Lionheart is a main character. Saladin is a main character. I also focus on one of Richard's knights, Baldwin of Caron, who's quite interesting because he was one of the knights who charged early at the Battle of Arsouf. So he's a main character, and in fact, I've got uh, Saladin's uh, biographer, Ibn Shaddad, as an important character. Uh, Richard's sister Joan plays a big role. Uh, who else? Aladil, Saladin's brother, plays a big role. I've got some fictional characters as well, but I'm working on uh, that novel right now. And actually, I, I just now start after doing a lot of research on it. My my research phase it lasted about a year or more. But I just kind of rounded off the research phase, and in the last few weeks, I've started working on the first draft. So that's always an exciting time when you're writing a novel. So I've, I've really been getting into that. And my thinking is that, okay, well, once I finish this book, which I'm hoping to have the first draft done in about the next six months or so, well, then that would be the perfect time once the book is done to maybe look at converting that book into a screenplay. And I think that would be a, a good first step toward doing a film project is, okay, I've got this finished novel. And I'm feeling very good about this novel. I mean, The Third Crusade is is pretty, it offers so much for a writer that, uh, you know, you can really come up with a powerful story for it. And I think I'm on to something with this particular novel, and I think it could be turned into a really cool film. So, so we'll have to see about that. A lot of people have, have asked me what they can do to help with this project, because, you know, as I've discussed this project over the course of uh, doing Real Crusades history, people have said, wow, you know, that, that sounds really, really amazing. Uh, I'd, I'd like to help with that. Um, you can help. Um, one thing you can do right now, especially, is promote this channel, like promote the videos on this channel. I know there's, there are a lot of people who, who really care about this channel, and there's a lot of people who, who do this already, but, you know, share this stuff on your social media, you know, share the videos, you know, as a new video comes out, share it around on your Facebook, your Twitter, whatever else you use. Um, let people know about it. Uh, go into forums and Facebook groups and that sort of thing. Post about Real Crusades history. Post about Real Crusades history on Reddit or some of these other sites like that. Uh, make posts about what we're doing. Invite people to check out the, the channel and to subscribe and, you know, be a part of this. So that is, God, that is such a huge thing. And if, if you can do that, you know, do it, you know, be out there helping uh, spread these videos around. Another thing you can do is if you feel like you might have something to contribute to a film project like this, let me know. I've had several people message me already, and I'm kind of building a little contact list of, of sort of, I guess, a preliminary team, you could say, you know, for eventually, you know, once this project happens and it's a long term project, you know, this is. This is something that um, this is a goal to, to work toward as the channel grows. But I've started building that preliminary contact list. Um, you know, if you are an artist, if you are a writer, if you are uh, somebody who has experience with with filmmaking in any way or or various or research or uh, various other um, artistic fields, you know, anime, uh, if, if you're an animator, 
If you're a programmer, let me know. Send me a message on realcrusadeshistory at gmail.com. Another thing, of course, you can do is is just support uh, Real Crusades history financially. You can become a patron on Patreon. Donate on PayPal. Uh, I have a PayPal, realcrusadeshistory at gmail.com. I've got a link uh, in the information box below this. You can donate via PayPal. You can also buy my book uh, and leave a review for my book. Um, there's a link to my novel, Why Does the Heathen Rage? Go there, uh, pick up a copy, uh, leave a review, all that good stuff. Um, you know, this is all about getting the numbers of Real Crusades history up. So just different ways that, uh, that you can you can help if you want to. So, um, all right. Finally, I'd like to just say, um, for those of you who are interested, we have a live stream coming up. Uh, we are doing a weekly Real Crusades history live. It's called, it's a, it's a live show called High Deus Voltage. Kind of a cute little name we came up with. Um, the next one is Wednesday, 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time. And we have uh, we did the first one last Wednesday, so we're doing one this coming Wednesday. Uh, join us there. Get into the chat. Say hi. Um, also, I want to remind everybody that we have a lot of really good articles coming out on realcrusadeshistory.com. Uh, Dr. Helena Schroeder, who is a great novelist and historian in her own right, she's done um, she does some amazing articles there about everything about the history of the Crusades. She's done some this amazing series of articles about the Templars. So go to realcrusadeshistory.com and uh, check that out. Uh, I think you'll probably enjoy it. But yeah, I just wanted to lay out some information, uh, some of my thinking about the idea of eventually uh, gearing Real Crusades history toward some sort of serious film project about the Crusades. So that's the long-term goal of this channel. That's where I, I hope that things head here. And um, I'm very much appreciative of everybody who is interested in Real Crusades history, all of you who have been a part of this as we've been going along. Take care, everybody. We'll talk to you soon.